Hey everyone, so in this video we're going to be talking about confidence intervals. So let's go ahead and jump right in. So first off, an interval estimate is an interval or range used to estimate a population parameter. So instead of just saying this is around 80, you would say it's somewhere between 78 and 82. So instead of getting an exact number, you're just giving a range that it lies between. All right? The level of confidence which we're going to denote by C, is the probability that the interval estimate contains the population parameter. And that's assuming that the estimation process is repeated a large number of times. So what that means is the level of confidence says, for example, that I'm 90% sure that our population parameter is somewhere within this interval. All right, so that's going to be the goal today is we're going to be trying to find confidence intervals, which just means an interval in which we're 90, 95, whatever it might be, percent sure that the population parameter is within it. All right, so in order to do that, we are going to use panic. So that's an acronym. So P just stands for parameter of interest. So it means what are we actually trying to find an interval for here. A is assumptions and conditions, which I'll get to in a second. N is we're going to name the interval test. So there's two different tests. Uh, in this set of notes, we're just going to be going over one of them, and the other one will be in the next set of notes. I is going to be the actual interval we find, and then C is going to be our conclusion, and our conclusion is going to be within the context of the problem. So in order to do that, all you have to do is fill in the blanks in this sentence with whatever level of confidence you have confidence, we can say that the parameter you're looking for is between this interval. Alright, so just fill in those three blanks with the things that you found and you're good to go. Alright, so for finding estimates of a mean, we're going to go over two different tests. The first one is going to be z-test, and the second one is going to be t-test, which we're going to talk about in the next set of notes. So for each of these, there are some assumptions and conditions. So the first two are the same for either test. The sample that you pull from has to be random, and it either has to be normally distributed or you have to have a sample size of greater than 30 or equal to 30. All right, so either test, those two things have to be true. The third one is what decides which test you're actually going to use. So for the Z test, that's when we know the population standard deviation. All right, and the question will actually say population standard deviation in it, so that's how you will know it's this one. For a t-test, that population standard deviation is unknown, so we don't know it, it's not given, so we use the test in the next notes, but for now, for this set of notes, it is always going to be given. But keep in mind, for the test, you are going to have to be able to tell which one of these you should be using. All right, so before we start on Excel and actually getting into examples, 
there's one more thing that we actually need to know. And that's Excel is going to talk about alpha. So alpha in Excel just means you use one minus the level of confidence that you want. All right, so for example, if you want an 80% confidence level, then your alpha would be one minus 0.8, which is 0.2, all right? Now remember, we can't use the percentage, so we have to use it as a decimal right here, so just be one minus 0.8, that's where we're getting the 0.2 from, all right? And then in order to actually find our interval in Excel, which I'm going to show you examples of this in just a second, but I wanted you to have in your notes, we're going to be using the function confidence.norm, and you need to give it three things. The first is the alpha, which we find like above. The second is your sigma, that is your population standard deviation. And lastly, we have our n, it's the number of samples you got. All right. Now, what this function does is it gives you a margin of error, which we're calling e. All right. So, that margin of error is so what it means is it just gives you an amount on either side of your found mean that it could have some error on all right so if you found the mean to be mu and that's just with your number of samples the margin of error just says if here is mu, which is the one that you found, then it could either be in this range up here, which would be mu plus e, or it could be in this range down here, which is mu minus e. So in total, our entire interval is going to be mu minus e to mu plus e. All right. So what that means is if you have a mean that you found of say 100 and you find a margin of error of 10, then your interval would be 100 minus 10 to 100 plus 10 or 90 to 110. So let's go ahead and try a couple examples. So David tried, sorry, David decides to try and estimate the mean score on math tests for the whole college. He samples 35 random students and finds their mean test score in math to be 79.2. If the population standard deviation was previously found to be 12 and normally distributed, then construct a 90% confidence interval for the test scores. All right, so we're just gonna go through panic and say what we're trying to do. All right, so for P, that's our parameter of interest. So what are we actually trying to look for? That would be the population mean test score in math.
All right, next up is A. It's our assumptions and our conditions. So, first off, we are sampling 35 random students. So it is random. We either need it to be normally distributed, which it is, or we need n to be greater than or equal to 30, which it also is. So it's normally distributed. And n is greater than or equal to 30. And then the last thing is we need to know the population standard deviation. And we do. We have the population standard deviation was 12. So sigma is known. So that means we are going to be using z-test. All right, so next up is the interval. So we're gonna head over to Excel and I will show you how to do that. Okay, so in Excel, all I have so far is the mean, sigma, and confidence interval that we're given in the problem. All right, so no tricks or anything yet. It's literally just what was given in the problem. I just have them here so you can see them on here as well. So first thing we need to do is find our E. So to find our E, we're gonna put equals confidence.norm and then it's going to need three things. So the first is the alpha. So remember, alpha is one minus your confidence interval. All right, so if our confidence interval was 90% or 0.9, one minus that would be 0.1. All right, so that's what we put in the first spot. Next is the standard deviation, which was our sigma, it's 12. And lastly, it asks for the size. Uh, in this case, I did forget to put it on here, but the problem does say 35 random students. So our n equals 35. Hit enter. And we have an e of 3.33. All right, so that's not our confidence interval yet. All right, in order to find our confidence interval, we need to find our lower and upper bounds, just the lower end and the higher end of what our interval is gonna be. So for our lower end, we're gonna do our mean, which is 79.2, but I'm just gonna click the cell that the mean is in, minus, that interval, or sorry, that E that we just found. Click enter, and we got our lower bound. For our upper, we're gonna do the same thing, except for we're gonna do mean plus E. These are our actual interval. All right, so that's the interval we want. I'm just going to round it to two decimal places, and I will see you back in the notes so that we can get those down. All right, back in the notes, we're just going to write down our interval now. So our interval was 75.86 to 82.5. Four if we round it to two decimal places. All right, hard part's done. Last thing we gotta do is C, which the, sorry, the C 
is for our conclusion. So that's where we just fill in the blanks. So with our level of confidence, which in this case was 90%, so with 90% confidence, we can say that our parameter, which is the population mean test score in math is between 75.86 and 82.54 right so again these spots I'm just filling in the blanks of that sentence that I already gave you all right so that's going to do it for this video, but in the next video we're going to do a couple more examples and we're also going to look at how big of sample sizes we actually need to get some accuracy. So I will see you in that video.